the M5 wasn't the first BMW to come from BMW's M division, but it did set the template when it was launched in 1984. And part of that was its split personality and that character, that kind of Jekyll and Hyde character. So it was stealthy, it was comfortable, but it also had a real wild street when you're in the mood as well. Now this M5 CS, the new model, turns that Mr. Hyde character up another level. It's the fastest, most powerful M5 ever produced. And not only that, it's the most powerful M car in history. Now just look at this car. We've got kidney grills like Gucci shades, bronze dolly wheels, carbon fiber everywhere. We've even got yellow headlights, a bit like a, a Renault 5 driving through Paris at midnight in the 1980s. Uh, we've got these four carbon fiber individual seats as well. Um, and it does beg the question, I think in some ways, this CS batch, it's unusual and, and actually the first time we've ever had it on an M5. So we've had the CS badge before on smaller, more sporting models like the M2, the M3, the M4. This is the first time we've had it on the M5. <laughs> and it does beg the question, you know, is it a more hardcore version? What does CS mean in the context of a super saloon? Now BMW itself says that it's both more sporting and more luxurious than the standard M5, which in the UK is the M5 competition. So it's almost like they're trying to stretch that breadth of capability even further than before. What's interesting though, is they haven't used the CSL badge. And I think quite rightly so, because those cars are more track focused, the hardcore, like we saw with the M3 CSL. But we also know that the L means lightweight. And this car is substantially lighter than the M5 competition actually, 70 kilos lighter. The key weight savings there are the carbon fiber bonnet. We've got forged alloy wheels. We've also got the carbon ceramic brakes as standard here, which save 23 kilos. They've even reduced the soundproofing on this car, which is quite unusual in a super saloon, actually. Now, saying that, with all the weight saving, the 70 kilo weight saving, this car is still pretty heavy at 18, 25 kilos, but that's only 95 kilos heavier than the M3, and that's the M3 with rear wheel drive only and two fewer cylinders. So it's pretty good, actually. It's pretty close to that M3. And of course, while it's reasonably similar on weight, it's a lot more powerful. So the M3 we know has a three litre twin turbo straight six that makes 503 brake horsepower. This car has a 4.4 litre twin turbo V8. Oh my God, it's really churning at the ground. It's so powerful. So here it's tuned to 626 brake horsepower. So that's only 10 brake horsepower more than the standard M5 competition, but let's face it, that's still an awful lot of power. And the torque figure, 553 pound foot of torque, that is unchanged from the standard car, but again, it's plenty. We have got the eight speed automatic gearbox as standard, and we've also got the M X drive all wheel drive. So we can have it in four wheel drive sport for a really rear biased feel, or we can just go to pure rear wheel drive and and uh, yeah, we'll see about that later, I think. Now this engine, of course, was the first time that BMW gave an existing M car a turbocharged engine. So we had the MSUVs, we had the 1M, but this was the first time one of its icons went to a, a turbocharged unit. And I've always liked this engine, actually. 4.4 litre twin turbo. Here, as we said, it's got 626 brake horsepower, and it is brilliant. It's characterful, it's, it's got a V8 burble, but it's also got a kind of high-tech M thing going on, which I think just makes it, gives it its own unique sound signature. And here as well, it's, it's slightly different. It's got a new exhaust, stainless steel exhaust outlets, and it just gives it a slightly kind of, just more attitude, more of an edge to it. And it's so quick. It just keeps on coming, so there's no real lag to this car. You just, let's just go for it in third gear here. We've got you know, 2,000 RPM. It just picks up instantly, and it's still you know, 7,000 RPM there, just in one long sweep. It's absolutely outrageous. So the 0 to 60 time, or 0 to 62 time, drops from 3.3 seconds, which is already blisteringly quick for such a heavy car, drops from 3.3 seconds to three seconds dead. Now, the Pirelli P0 Corsa tires 
and um, they're going to be a key factor in that they're stickier than the standard uh, tires but we've also got a revised chassis here it's seven mil low we've got new bearing springs but we've also got interestingly the adaptive dampers that were originally designed for the m8 grand coupe so that's part of what makes this car more luxurious. I think that the BMW are going for more compliance and trying to keep the wheel in contact with the ground better, which I think, as we've just seen, with such a powerful 626 brake horsepower M5, that's definitely a very beneficial thing. Now, I think driving this car, one of the first things you notice, actually, if you've driven the M5 before, is the compliance with this car now as i said before we've got the the m8 grand coupe dampers and they really do have a lovely compliance to them so you can have them in three settings i think on uk roads comfort is perfect you they just breathe really nicely but you've got a lot of control you know the the, the driven wheels well all four wheels are just keeping in contact and it just gives you real real confidence to press on actually now as i said it's got got the all-wheel drive system we are in four-wheel drive sport at the moment so that just puts even more to the rear and makes it feel like that traditional BMW rear bias but with the safety net at the front and, and just because it's so powerful I think that's that's really beneficial and it doesn't detract from from the driving experience at all I, I did notice that this car has basically the same tyre sizes on it as, as the new M3 new M3 has 19s on the front and 20s on the back this is 20s all round but but the actual tyre sizes the, the width um, and the profile are the same. So while those tyre sizes are the same size and the M5 actually should have more traction through and, and more grip through those P0 courses, I think you do notice there's more weight in the front of this car and, and it does have a little bit more push in it. As you turn it in, it just doesn't quite have that crispness that, that the new M3 has. But, but although there's that little bit extra push in this car, I think you just get used to that and actually it becomes quite a mobile car, it really wants to move around and, and you learn that the, there's going to be that little bit of slip and as you release the, the, it really rotates around you so it's surprisingly playful again for such a big heavy car and that's what makes this car so involving as well I think. Yeah so it just starts to move you know it, it starts to push you release and then press on and it just makes the car gives it that freedom to move around about its you know about its center pivots around its center. Now we've seen how competent this car is in all-wheel drive mode, but I think for M diehards, it's always nice to have that rear-wheel drive option as well. I think that's been key in helping people kind of accept that, you know, even more so than, than turbocharging. Being able to switch it to rear-wheel drive, turn everything off is just so key to M Division. So I think we better take a deep breath, press the setup menu down here, and just see how bonkers it actually is. Is rear wheel drive mode by the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My god. Yeah. This thing is pretty feisty, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> if you switch it to rear wheel drive, you've definitely got to have your eye on the ball. <laughs> Now, as well as this fantastic engine, we've also got this eight-speed automatic gearbox. I remember talking to Albert Beerman after he left M Division for Hyundai, and he was really gutted about this. And, and he, he's a great guy, um, completely respect him, but, but he, was, you know, he was all about the dual-clutch gearbox and, and really gutted that they'd gone to um, automatic. And, uh, you know, but this thing really punches in the gear shifts. I think if we give it some now, there's no lag there at all, it's just pretty much instant. And you know, there's maybe not, well there isn't the kick of a dual clutch gearbox, but it's pretty close and you get all those benefits of it being so refined uh, when you're parking and things like that. I mean, it's the power delivery is really relentless in this car and, and the gearbox is, is a good part of that, I think. We've got these carbon ceramic brakes as well, we've got fantastic pedal feel and, and just really haul this car down from big speeds time and time and again, which, you know, it is a heavy car, there's a lot of performance and it just copes with it with no sweat at all. It's just really easy to get in a, in a fast flow with this car, I think that's what really impresses me. It's comfortable, you know, it's, it's not a kind of bone-shaking ride, it's definitely improved 
on the regular competition with these dampers. The engine is absolutely, it's absolutely phenomenal. Uh, the gear shift, the brakes, everything just hangs together. And then we've got that chassis on top of it all with the four wheel drive that really lets you lean on it to a point where point to point, it is just absolutely sensational. You're all weather. Plus you've got the benefit of the rear wheel drive and you switch it off if you want to be a hooligan. I mean, what's not to like really? I think the big question mark with this car is the price. You know, there's no question I'd absolutely love to own one of these, have it in my garage, but it's 140 thousand pounds so 38,000 pounds more than the regular m5 which is already pretty punchy at 102,000 pounds and perhaps a more pertinent point as well is the new m3 that costs 72,000 pounds i think so it's almost half the price of the m5 and it's a bigger car these days you get these seats optionally if you want as well and it does a lot of what the m5 does you know I prefer the engine in the M5 I think the damping in this is probably better as well but I love the M3 it does everything I want it to do for a car of this type so I think you really are into the law of diminishing returns when you can get so much of what this car offers for hundred and forty thousand pounds in an M3 that costs about 70 you know but there's no question that this car is fantastic I'd love to own it I'd love to have it in my garage, you know, what a car, it's absolutely fantastic, the engine, the drivetrain, but I think 140,000 is a bit rich for me.